Hey, it's Rick here from Rick's Rusty Rex, and today we're going to talk about protectant. Protectant is sold by the Dollar General Store, and it is what we use on all of our fine automobiles. The following movie is rated PG-13. It's, it's for clear finish technology, but I like it. It's basically really... All right, we're going to compare these fuel pumps here. You want to hold the camera? And then today when I came out to start it up to move it over in the shade, now it won't run. Like I said, you got to get this stuff off while it's wet because she's not going to want to come off of there. And uh, show you more. Welcome to RC Industry. Well, hey, it's Rick here, and today um, we're gonna do a little old, you know, buffing of the car, or try to make it look a little better. I want to put my stickers on the side of it, you know, RC Industry and Lime La Tida and No Name Nationals and all that stuff on here. But uh, I kind of wanted to clean it up a little bit. It's, you know, all these years of it sitting under a tree, and it's the paint's really oxidized. So. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it, and uh, I wouldn't recommend anything I do. A lot of you are like, oh, you do such the crappiest work and this and that, and I'm like, if you go and watch the channel, it's all about making it like brand used here. We don't, we don't, you know, we're just trying to do anything we can and not spend a dollar. So I did actually have to buy some bucket compound today because mine was so dried up it wouldn't work. But anything we can do to save a buck, that's what we're going to do. So, all right. Thanks for coming along. Be sure to like and share and uh, show you more. So uh, I don't know if you can look down through there and see these dents, but this thing's got hail damage everywhere. And uh, the ribs of this hood are in the way on some of them, but this one right here, I can get to. So I'm gonna take my, my hand tool here and I'm just gonna use probably this right here. And we're just gonna kinda work that like that. And I'm looking down across it this way, and I can see it. That's pretty good there. That's a lot better than it was. We'll never get them all out, probably. Let's see if we can reach some of these up here. Let me get you to where you can kind of see that, maybe. I don't know. Can you see that right up through there? one right there. I don't know if you're seeing that. There's a big one there, but there's one right there. So let's see if we can get that one out. I've got another little brass thing here that I can hit that with. If I need to. pretty good actually now these this big one that's right here that is down underneath this brace and there's not really I'm gonna have to get a little screwdriver or something and stick up in there and try to see if we can pull that one out so anyway that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna work on that a little bit and I'll show you more okay guys so uh, we got some water here got a rag with a little bit of water and we got some rubbing compound here and we've got uh, I mean the paint on this car is shot there's just no doubt about it but I want to try to make it look as good as we can you know for our victory lap you know down at Sykeston so uh, we're gonna take the old polisher black and decker 500 here and uh, we're gonna put a little water on that that's probably too much. So let's kind of smear this around a little bit. Now, whatever this stuff gets on, you want to get it off because it's gonna it's gonna discolor your paint.
you got to be careful on these edges too because you'll burn right through it and uh, you can see up here on this hood where the paint is thin already it looks like we got a permanent handprint right here it's probably from us working on it and having brake clean on our hands so I don't know if we can get that out or not but we'll we'll give it a shot here I believe that came right off like I said you got to get this stuff off while it's wet because She's not going to want to come off of there. Okay. Now, you can definitely see a difference between this and this. And you can feel a difference too where this is real smooth and then it's rough so uh, we're going to take and uh, I'm going to take or whatever and polish the rest of this hood over to the center crease here and uh, then we'll put some wax on it and uh, the only thing we can do is try to preserve what's here you, you know you're not going to make this look like you know it knew off of the showroom floor so all right show you more okay so you can really tell the difference between here and here. This is real smooth and this is real rough. Plus this is oxidized looking yet. So, so and you know, yeah, the dents are still there. I mean, we're not gonna get those out. Not me as a body man. Uh, I don't know how to get those out any better than what I've got them, so. But you know, they look better than they did. Um, so now we're gonna take a little polishing compound and we're gonna switch our rag or not our rag, but our, we're going to switch our buffing wheel over to a clean one. And we're going to put some of this polishing compound on here. Uh, and because it's a, it's, it's for clear finish technology, but I like it. It's basically really uh, fine. So we're going to kind of go over this with that. And then we're going to put some wax on it. So, okay, show you more. something I didn't tell you but probably should have is that you want to do this in small sections like I was doing you probably noticed I was doing that but I didn't tell you why so because you've got to work them small sections and keep everything cleaned up because you don't want that heavy-duty rubbing compound all over everything and even this uh, mild polishing cream you just don't want it everywhere because it's hard to clean up so uh, and uh, I may not be showing a real good video of it here but there's a couple of guys out on the internet that do show low-end you know the the guy that ain't got no money like me how you can polish one and uh, I kind of like what they do it's kind of the way we used to do it when I worked at the body shop so uh, one of them is junkyard digs so if you haven't ever checked out his channel he's got uh, two or three videos through the through the years um, that he shows polishing and stuff like that and the other one's Dalton over at Pole Barn Garage uh, he's always doing low budget rest restorations on those cars he's doing and makes them look nice and that's all I'm wanting to do is just make this look nice and you know maybe keep it from getting any worse over the next couple of years so anyway all right I'm gonna jump on this and polish this and uh, we'll show you more okay sticking with the whole uh, turtle wax theme here we're going to use this antique stuff here I got um, dollar 97 for this jar that, that was a pretty good price back then and we're going to take this antique thing I got here that barely works, and we're going to polish this on with with this this type of a doodad, and then we'll uh, we'll buffer off with this 
microfiber thing and make her shine. So, all right, show you more. Okay, guys and gals, uh, I've got this that microfiber thing on here, so. Uh, this you just want this dry so it's been sitting here now you don't want to do this in the hot sun but you do want it dry so this can buff off there you guys have surely waxed vehicle before so that's all we're doing we're just using this motion to do it for us so we're just going to let that thing kind of do its thing there Keep working it down. Okay, I think you can see the difference here. So you got this old oxidated stuff here, and then you've got this that's real smooth. And you know, from a distance, it looks pretty good. So anyway, I'm gonna continue to work on this. It's gonna take me several hours because you know that paint is really, really gonna be the car is big to start with, but you know, the paint is really, really bad. I mean, we gotta really work on it. So Anyway, uh, I'll bring you back when I get it done. Show you more. All right, guys. Well, uh, as you can see, I, I didn't get this thing finished because I ran out of time yesterday. And then today when I came out to start it up to move it over in the shade, now it won't run. Uh, acts like the float has sunk in that uh, Mr. China carburetor that I bought. So anyway, and that's how it goes. You know, it's always something around here. So, uh, but we're gonna get the rest of this thing polished up. And uh, but we got to get the carburetor pulled off of it. And so, uh, yeah, I'll try to show you what I find in that, maybe on the short or something. So. Okay, well, instead of uh, finishing this video there, we did a little diagnostic work, and uh, I ain't getting no fuel is why the old girl won't run. So we're uh, in the process of taking this off. And uh, got us a clamp here mashing that hose i'm sure that's real good on it so we're going to take these two lines off of here and uh take them bolts loose right there and see if we can't pull that up out of there all right show you more eric came by and he's wrenching on the top part of this so we got to get that bolt off we finally got them lines loose down there and then i found my power steering lines leaking and uh the clamp is not down on it all the way. That's probably my fault. So I'm going to get down under there and fix that too while we're at it. Hopefully this takes care of the problem. All right, we're going to compare these fuel pumps here. You want to hold the camera? Sure. Well, let's see, there's the new one. There's the old one. It appears to be the same. So uh, hopefully this one works. I want to put some lube on here. It's probably a little overkill, but oh well. S such as it is. And then we're gonna the gasket's still 
brand new looking from when I had the timing cover off to put the timing gears on. So I'm just going to put a little of this ultra black on there and we'll shove this in. All right, show you more. Well, she still ain't running right, guys. It's It's got no fuel in the bowl. We tested the fuel pump with a coffee can. The new fuel pump is putting out. Probably the old one was too. I should have checked that before I bought a new one. So, there's, there's, no, there's no fuel in here. So either the needle and seat is stuck and isn't letting fuel through, which wouldn't let it run rich, or the... Um, jet in the bottom of this thing is fouled up somehow and it's just letting it all run right on through into the intake manifold so don't know which it is but we're going to pull it off of here and see what we get all right show you more all right guys well and gals uh still no luck uh, i took the carburetor apart and um i didn't find anything wrong uh i don't have any idea of how high to set the float level but if you put some air, you know, from kind of blow through with your mouth through the inlet there and operate the float, it shuts off the level and whatever. But the vehicle still just acts like it's just flooding out when, it, when it's running. So, but I guess that could be some misfire stuff. I put a new cap and uh, rotor on it because I wanted to replace that before I went to Saxton. And um, maybe it's misfouling through there i check i double checked my firing order on the rotor so everything's right there i replaced this when we first bought the car because the old one had the junk running out of it if you remember so i guess maybe it could be that thing telling this thing what to do i don't know anyway comment down below looks like we're back to towing this thing down to sykeston <laughs> got eric's truck over there maybe we have to Maybe we have to tow it. I don't know. Short or something. So. But thanks for coming along. Be sure and like and share. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. You know, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we'll be looking for you down at Sykeston. Uh, we'll be there. I don't know. We, we may be back to dragging this thing or towing it, but uh, we, we, we may be. We're going to be there one way or the other. So. Anyway, as always, we're making it just like brand used here, baby. Run to Lula, run! Hi, baby. 